Hello, welcome to another video. My name's Mel Chadwick. Here's what's been going on over the last month. I generally find autumn to be a time for new things, and this year has been no exception, with a series of firsts for me. First time exhibiting on the Lizard Peninsula with a couple of friends. First time producing a zine of my sketchbook work. And a few weeks ago, first time sketching and meeting my American artist friend Sandy Hester in person. <laughs> Lately, I've been dwelling on the concept that every day can be viewed as a first. After all, this day will never be repeated again. Even if it can feel like you're in a loop of doing the same thing day in and day out, each new day there are changes, whether you see them or not. Whether it's towards something positive or negative, there are moments of new possibilities, connections that can be made, thoughts, conversations and discussions that can be had and occasions and opportunities we can seek out. Whether we choose to engage is entirely up to us. It was mid-autumn of 2017 when we had just moved to Port Flevin from Falmouth with my husband. It was a time of change and new beginnings. I've always enjoyed rising early and seeing the sunrise, going outside and the world is still sleeping and feeling the cool air on my face. I remember waking early one morning and had the urge to go out with a sketchbook and draw what I saw around me. I found an old, unused sketchbook and filled a water brush with black ink for a makeshift pen. And from that point, went out every day, rain or shine, for the next six months sketching what I saw. It felt like a special time of exploration a discovery of something very fundamental that had been lost along the way, and a return to what I loved to do, observe and draw. I didn't feel lonely or afraid, just expectant and curious, and excited about what I would draw that morning. Six years later, those initial urges continue to lead me to go out and sketch. They have introduced me to so much more than I would have imagined for myself. People, places, jobs, opportunities, products, and this exhibition, all from taking my sketchbook out one early autumn morning. I just thought I'd share with you some of the things I've been creating from my sketchbooks. This is um, my one of my main sketchbooks that I love working in. It's a Ranger Delusions Creative Journal. And yeah, I've just been really enjoying the format of it, being able to work across the double page and square format. And yeah, it's been coming out with me over the summer the last few months and I've just really enjoyed working in it. Got a few new car designs. This one is based on the Goon Hilly sketch. See the original here. So it's quite nice to actually see together. And then another sketch is this one here and I've created a another card from that sketch called it Napweed and Painted Ladies and then another card that I've done this one is based on the Kynance Cove and if I open this up you can see now again, I've taken it across the whole of the card. It's just been nice to actually get my sketches onto things so people can um, see them. With that said, I decided to produce a zine uh, for the front cover. I've kind of chose one sketch for the front and then another bit for the back. I zoomed in on the textures here, which were 
from this sketch. So I zoomed in on this area here. I think because I just really love the texture there. On the inside cover I've got three sketches. Then I've written a little bit about what you'll find in the zine and then also a little bit about the Lizard Peninsula and what makes it interesting and varied and then what I use as well along with a little picture. So yeah I'll do a quick flick through so you can see on each page I've put the date of when I sketched it as well as um, what I wrote on the pages and I've just typed it up. I think this is a favourite of mine, this sketch. And this sketch you would have seen me creating on the channel. And the final page has my a picture of my tins, neo colours, which I use a lot in my sketching process. And then the final end paper just has three more sketches from my sketchbook. I love looking at artists' sketchbooks and just having a closer look at their mark making textures. It can be quite inspiring to uh, just be able to dwell a little bit longer and have a look. So if you're interested in getting one of these zines, they will be going up in my shop. And going forward, I also hope to build on this. So you've noticed I've called it volume one. So I hope to expand on it as I continue to sketch in my sketchbook and also maybe also have some different subject matters as well. So this is landscapes, but I also like to draw uh, old buildings, cottages, ruins and boats. I think a boat themed sketchbook zine would also be very interesting. And then just a few more little things I've got here. This is like being reprinted onto like a textured paper. It's not very thick but um, it is it does look really nice and I'm going to be selling these at quite a reasonable price um, along with my 12 Cornish dishes. This is actually on a card as well and it's been quite a popular design and I thought actually this would be quite nice uh, to be hung maybe in a kitchen environment. You may remember I did a postcard every day for 2020 and I have sold probably about 100 of them but that still means there's going to be quite a few left and I thought it'd be nice to actually frame them up a little bit so people can see how they look and what I love about this frame is that you can see it obviously in the front but then you can turn it around and you can see the date of when it was made, the title and the number. Um, and obviously if someone writes on it, then that would be quite nice to have in a frame like this. They will also be on sale and also on show. With, again, lots of other postcards. Some of you will probably recognise these. They're again images that I've taken from my previous year's calendars and there's other postcards as well that I'm also going to be sharing. Um, so lots of different things to see and hopefully be inspired by, enjoy looking at um, and I'm really looking forward to it.
let me give you a tour of our exhibition at the Coast Colour Canvas Gallery. On the desk here we have some of my sketchbooks that I put out. I just put them out when I'm actually at the exhibition. And then on the walls I've got my originals. original postcards from my 2020 project and here are the ones that I framed along with the lizard map that I also got framed. I do like how these look in these frames. And then across the way is Crixus's wall. Here are her lovely postcards, alongside her stickers and her calm tobazine from last year. And then she also has her fabric, screen prints. And Mr Fox. And a little area of framed originals. And then in the blue nook, we have Natasha's work. She was selling a really nice four piece postcard set. And she also had a selection of sea clay prints. Here are her framed originals. Over the course of the week, we had around 175 people visit. Locals, friends, neighbours, my parents even turned up, and then people who knew us from our YouTube communities. And here is the lovely Helen, Hello. who visited Hello. from Somerset. <laughs> this is Helen, she's visiting the exhibition oh. today. Oh, it's lovely. It's so amazing to see it all in person, it really is. We also have visits from fellow artists, like Lee from Bombay Forest and Pippa from Lewenek Art Studio. We were able to introduce our work to new viewers and have conversations about our process and work. It wasn't all plain sailing. We had a power cut on Wednesday, which meant we lost a whole day, but the gallery were kind enough to reimburse us for that day. And we were able to open in the evening, although we only had one visitor. I sold a range of work, mostly calendars, scenes and cards, but also a couple of framed originals and postcards, and definitely have seen the benefit in having a physical venue that you can show your work in. The weeks leading up to the exhibition were probably the most involved, particularly as a lot of decisions are made on what things to get printed and how many, along with all the other bits that you don't usually think of until you do something like this. Overall, it was a positive experience though, being able to actually meet people in person and take them into a space that you've been able to make your own. I think that was a very positive thing for us to do and to be able to do it together. And I hope we'll be able to do some more exhibitions in the future. The Monday before, we rose early and set out on what was a very foggy day. We arrived in Exeter by 9.30 and as we were looking for the car park turning, we spotted two familiar faces waving and grinning at us. It was Sandy and Grady. And our time with them was probably, as you can imagine, full of fun, chat, food, and went far too fast. We explored the quay in Exeter and although it was raining, Sandy and I sketched the boats in the dock. We then packed up and moved to a more sheltered spot and sketched the bridge which Sandy was super inspired by. 
with all the swans swimming underneath. rained on us. It was very proper British day. Gosh, what hell? It got all rained on us. I don't know if mom will ever dry out. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tony's so in we're it. We're all filming now. Fun, fun day. Wait, there's no in the background. <laughs> Once the guys had returned, they helped film for a bit, and then we all went and had lunch together. Bangers and mash, followed by a cream tea. But then you'd have to use it. How are you going to do it? Jam on it, try it, like doing it the Cornish way. Yeah. Then again, travel. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go on the After a little bit of exploration in an old church, it was soon time to say goodbye and get back on the road to Cornwall. It was a super sweet day that was over way too fast. I still find it strange to think Sandy was some artist I met on the internet back in 2017 because of starting a YouTube channel in my late 30s and then agreeing to do a collab series in 2021, interviewing her for my sketchbook course and then finally meeting in person in 2023. And so this takes me back to my initial thoughts, seeing each day as a new day filled with possibilities and opportunities, reaching out and connecting, going outside and seeing the world around you, whether you're fresh out of college or in the midst of your career or have kids or your autumn years, it's never too late to start something new. And so it's time for this vlog to end. I'm looking forward to what the rest of the season brings and in the next few weeks hope to be teaching my first collaborative workshop with Pippa, combining drawing with clay. It's certainly going to be fun. Here's a little glimpse at what we'll be doing. All the links to the things I mentioned will be in the description. And I hope you are well. And I'll speak to you again really soon. Mm -hmm.